can see how he, he comes in. He's a little flatter on this side of the foot, the outside of the foot. He's, he's abusing the outside of this foot. The inside of the foot is more rounded. And we're just going to give him a little more support on the outside of this foot and try to protect that a little more. I'm taking a measurement. I may also take that measurement and use a chalk and put that on the edge of my anvil so that while I'm shaping the shoe for this foot, I have a, a measurement that I can go by to save me trips back and forth to the horse. All right, we've got a uniform heat on that shoe. I'm going to take the inside of the medial side and just reduce the width of web just a little bit. I'm going to give it a little more heel check, bring it in. Then on the lateral side or outside, I'm going to knock down that lateral heel from the foot surface or from the ground surface. That'll give me just a little greater width of web on that outside heel and allow that outside heel to land just a little more delicately. When I'm using that rounding hammer, if I'm bending the inside of the shoe, I'll use the round side of the hammer. When I make adjustments here, I use the flat side. If I'm leveling out the shoe on the face of the anvil, I use the flat side. If I'm using a tool, a four punch, a pritchel, hitting any other tool, I'm going to be using the round side of that hammer. I'm looking down the shoe at several different angles and making sure that I have that as flat as I can get it. I'll use the flat side of the hammer and just bend that clip in at the same angle as the hoof wall. And when I'm using that hammer, I want to get the back on the handle and I want to have my pinky out. I'm not going to grip it really tight. I'm going to take stress off of my elbows, my wrists, by just getting back, letting that hammer drop and do its job without pushing that hammer into the shoe or into the anvil. Once that shoe is flat, it's still relatively warm so that I can go to the horse's foot. I can check the shape of that shoe compared to the horse's foot. I can set those clips in just a little bit and I can go back to the hammer and anvil and make adjustments while the shoe is still hot. I can see that I have the inside heel of the shoe way too tight. I need to bring that heel out to cover that foot. The lateral heel needs to come out just a little bit. I'll go and make those adjustments. In order to bring out that inside heel, I'm going to cross tong to the toe. I'm going to put the horn of the anvil underneath the point in which I want to come out and I'm going to hit with the flat side of the hammer at the point where I want it to start coming out. I'm going to walk that hammer back and forth a little bit. I'll also bring out that lateral heel just a little bit. I've made a mark on my anvil so I can see if I have the width appropriate. I'll check to make sure that it's flat or level. And then I'll go back to the horse and check that again. The horse's hoof is not a great conductor of heat, so as long as I do not hold that shoe on for more than 15 seconds in a 30 second period, I'm not going to increase the, the heat of that hoof or create any injury. Some horses are afraid of the smell and are afraid of the sight of the smoke, and that needs to be taken into consideration for a safe environment for the farrier the handler, and the horse.
It doesn't matter how good I am with my tools or how good my tools are, I cannot make two perfectly flat surfaces. But by having a little heat on there, I can make two surfaces that match perfectly so that we have a uniform stress to the hoof wall where that shoe sets.